Reading with your kids. Hola, Niho, Konnichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Jumbo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Thank you so much for being part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. We have a wonderful guest for you today. Mother, mother, where is my color? That's the name of our guest's brand new picture book. Our guest's name is Kimberly Hemmings. Hey, for all the authors that are listening out there, I wanted to share with you this great email that, that we received here at the Reading With Your Kids podcast from Dr. Linda Mubar. She is the uh, a past guest and the author of Maxine's New Job. Here's the email. Dear Fatima and Jed, good news. Maxine's New Job has been nominated to receive the prestigious Henri Award at the 2018 Christian Literacy Awards for Outstanding Literacy Work in the Children's Book Division. I sincerely believe your certifying Maxine as a great read helped bring increased social media attention to the book. Thank you for the exposure and the great marketing. We are so happy for Dr. Linda Mubarak that her book, uh, Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read, Maxine's New Job, received this prestigious recognition. We would love to help your book receive that same kind of recognition. If you are interested in having your book considered for our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read program, please visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. You can click on the contact button, send us a, a note, and we'll send all the information back to you, or you can go right to our Certified Great read page on our website it's fun it's easy and it is really really an effective way to let the world know that your book stands out above all the rest the reading with the kids certified great read program we are so happy we love we love meeting new authors but we also love having old friends come back on the show our guest tonight is the author of Ace and Grace in the Flying Suitcase. We talked about that before. She's here to talk about her brand new book, Mother, Mother, Where's My Color, Please. Welcome back to the show, Kimberly Hemmings. Kimberly, how are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me again. We just, uh, Kimberly and I were just chatting. Kimberly is in Atlanta. And I'm in Boston. I was telling her how it snowed a little bit. And we're, we're talking and joking about how Atlanta shuts down if there's a <laughs> possibility of snow in North right. Carolina, I think. But then we were joking and we, and we thought, just imagine what would happen if there was snow on the beautiful island of Jamaica that, that Kimberly writes about <laughs> so often. And right. Some, that would definitely be interesting. <laughs> it would be interesting. Somehow I feel, it, I've never been to Jamaica, but I have a lot of uh, friends who were born there and grew up there. And mm -hmm. you, you know, they're, they're just kind of chill. And I think they just kind of figure out Go a way with to the deal flow. with it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they, they're very laid back. And whatever happens, they deal with it and keep on moving. <laughs> yeah. So Mother, Mother, Where's My Color takes us back to Jamaica. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So you are correct. Tell us about it. So, as you mentioned, Ace Grace and the Flying Suitcase Visit Jamaica is my debut book. And I call Mother Mother Where's My Color the companion book to the mm, first book. Okay. Because this book is also based in Jamaica. The setting is on the beautiful island of Jamaica. And because Jamaica is known for its hummingbirds, this book is about a little hummingbird named Harmony who was born and notices that she does not have all of the beautiful bright colors like her parents and her siblings. And she's devastated. So what she does is she decides she's going to fly away from her nest and fly across the island of Jamaica looking for her perfect color. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. And during her journey, she's going to learn a very important lesson that I'm not going to quite go into detail with because I would love for my listeners to find out. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I, I love it. You know, as you were mentioning that, I've, 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 I've actually seen a hummingbird twice in my life. Mm -hmm. and, and both times I was lying in my hammock out on my deck <laughs> and my wife has these beautiful flowers all around 
And I just heard this little noise, and I looked up, and for about 10 seconds, I right. saw this incredibly beautiful little hummingbird just yes. kind of popping into the flowers and out, and then it was and it was gone. It was like a magic yes. trick. Yes, they move very, very quickly. And, of course, hummingbirds are the national bird of Jamaica, so... Um, I just am fascinated by hummingbirds. Um, and actually, in the back of the book, I have 10 interesting facts, facts about hummingbirds that I think children will find really, really interesting that they may not have known. Can you share a couple of those facts sure. with us? Because like I said, I, I was just fascinated seeing them, and I knew they existed, but it wasn't until I was quite old until I actually <laughs> saw them in person. It was very cool. <laughs> Okay, well, one is hummingbirds are one of the smallest birds in the world, Mm -hmm. and um, they are the only birds that can fly backwards or upside down. Now, I I, I did not Mm -hmm. see the bird flying upside down. (laughs) And I love to tell my students, um, I tell them, imagine an eraser on the back end of a pencil Mm -hmm. or either a jelly bean, that's what size a hummingbird egg is. Wow. So the hummingbird eggs are super, super tiny. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. This is, I, I love this. And, and you've obviously fallen in love with the island of Jamaica. And yes. what, what was it, what was it that started that love affair between you and the island? Well, speaking of a love affair, <laughs> My husband is from Jamaica, uh-huh. so his family, well, his father still lives there, so we do vi- visit the island frequently, so I consider Jamaica my second home, mm-hmm. and I wanted that to be the debut book just because of how dear it is to me and my heart, and I wanted the companion book, of course, to coincide with Jamaica, but... Um, I'm finally going to let Jamaica stay for a while, and um, I'm going on to another country for my next book that will be coming out very soon. Oh, exciting. Uh, Can you give us a hint as to what what country that might be? Sure. I'll go ahead and even tell you. All right. The, The next book is one of my other favorite places that I had the pleasure of visiting, and it is, drum roll, <laughs> Kenya. Ace and Grace Ooh. are going to be traveling to the wonderful continent of Africa, to the country of Kenya. You know, I love this. And, you know, we always talk about what kind of things we can talk about with our kids when we're reading particular books. I, you know, Ace and Grace going to Kenya. I mm-hmm. think the first and probably most important thing that families can talk about is the fact that Africa is not a country. It's actually a continent made up of yes. a number of very different and very diverse countries. Mm-hmm. And I'm amazed. You would be, yes. I'm you would be surprised. How, not only children, but many adults get that confused yeah, as well. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I'm going to go to Africa. Really? What part? Because it's exactly. <laughs> and if you it's, land at the wrong airport, you're going to have a long trip. <laughs> you really will, yes. So I'm really excited about that book. So each future book that I have in the series is going to be the Ace and Grace book coupled with a follow-up book or a companion book. So I'm thinking the next companion book to the Kenya book will be about a giraffe, and I'm just going to leave it at that and won't give too many details until that time comes. That's awesome. Now, I have, I've just developed a connection with Kenya. We have a new priest in our church who is okay. from Kenya. Awesome. And he's amazing, and he has such, it, it's such a, 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 ch- a, a wonderful change of pace because mm-hmm. as he's celebrating the Mass, he sings Mm, you know, just yes. randomly, and just I am so happy, and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, music is a very important part of the culture. Yes, and that's that's one of the reasons um, that I love it. And you know, I love going to the countries and just absorbing the culture. The food being one of the first things because mm-hmm. I love to eat, and of course the music and just embracing the whole feel of the different cultures. Yeah, I. And I, and I love the fact that the Ace and Grace in the Flying Suitcase and Mother, Mother, Where's My Color? It's, it's a great way to 
open our kids' eyes to the fact that there are all these wonderful cultures surrounding us. And I think a lot yes. of times kids can be afraid of, of differences. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Adults can be afraid of differences right. sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't think it's, it's, uh, I don't think it's bad for us to admit that because admitting that's kind of the first step to getting exactly. over it. <laughs> exactly. I totally agree. And that's one reason why I decided to write the series because one, I really enjoy traveling. I really enjoy reading and writing. And I wanted to combine all of those loves of mine to help students and not only children, but parents as well. And I also try to integrate in each book that I write, not only will they learn about the different countries, but there are always lessons and morals for them to learn. Um, for example, um, in Ace Grace in the Flying Suitcase Visit Jamaica, one of the morals is to always try something new. Don't be afraid to try something new. And then in Mother, Mother, Where's My Color, it's something that's really, as a teacher, I see a lot of, a lot of times our students are not happy with who they are mm. and what they were given. You know, they see other students, their peers, social media, um, television, of course, and they strive to be something that they're really not, whether it's something um you know, whether it's a hairstyle or makeup, they're always trying to change who they are. And with Mother, Mother, Where's My Color, I want students and children to learn to embrace what they have mm-hmm. and, and to embrace their uniqueness and love who they are. Because for one thing, the outside appearance will not stay that way forever. So it's much more important to cherish and, and build a beautiful person on the inside. Yeah. You know, my 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 amazing daughter is is now 23 years old and and so now uh very often when we're with her boyfriend and with her boyfriend's families and we have these great meals and conversations and and very oftentimes she'll bring up some of the things that i would say to her when she was younger and usually it she's she's bringing it up to kind of tease me and you know, it's just, <laughs> you know but one mm-hmm. of the things uh that 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 I would talk to her a lot about when she was younger because she was a very beautiful little mm-hmm. girl. She's still a beautiful young young mm-hmm. woman. But, I mean, literally one time a waitress came over and, and looked at my daughter, who was, I think, two or three at the time, and dropped her plates. And, and she's like, oh, my goodness, your daughter is so beautiful. It took my Oh, wow. Away. <laughs> and my, my daughter and I just kind of looked at each other and rolled our mm-hmm. eyes. But <laughs> one of the things I always told her was that it was really wonderful that she was blessed but with this right. beautiful outward mm-hmm. appearance, but it's so much more important to be beautiful on the inside. Exactly. And that, that, that's what we can control. We really can't control what we look like. We're kind of right. born that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, goodness knows if I could, if I could control what I look like, I would do, <laughs> do something oh, very different, but, but, but it's that inside beauty, that inner beauty. And if we can, Get in touch with that and help our kids understand how important, how much more important that is. Right. Uh, not only for and themselves, it, but to search that out in other people. Right. And it could be something as simple as a teacher. I've seen some of my students who are really self-conscious. It could be something like their weight. It could be um, the texture of their hair. It could be the fact that they have to wear glasses. Or even the fact that they may have to attend a, a special class that may be different from their peers. Mm-hmm. I just want students to learn all of those differences. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's okay. And, and, and yeah, and, and one thing too, it's, it's, you know, uh, helping our kids understand that if, if they're struggling with something, and meanwhile, their best friend or another kid in the class mm-hmm. just seems to ace everything and everything is easy to that person. Just to help our kids understand, there are going to be things that are going to trip up that other kid. You, you know, right. everybody mm-hmm. has challenges with something. No one's perfect. Exactly. And, and, and no one is a failure. There are going to be things that you really shine at. It's just a matter mm-hmm. of coming to, becoming comfortable with our, with our right. abilities and with others' abilities. Very true. And um, 
just to um, piggyback on that, I wrote a simple little song at the end of the book entitled I Am Special. And this is a really, really cute song that students of all ages can really sing. It's kind of like an anthem to who mm-hmm. they are. Um, and it's it's sang to the tune of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And it just talks about they may be different, but that's okay because each person is special in their own unique way. Can, can you give us a little uh, Oh, my gosh. Preview? You're not going to make me sing it, are you? I'm not going to make you, but I'm going <laughs> to ask you. It might embarrass put peer pressure on you. <laughs> Speaking of talents and things that you don't really have, <laughs> the talent of singing is not mine. But I'll sing a little verse. Okay. okay here we go. I am different. That's okay. I am special in my own way. I am special. Don't you know? I am special. Look at me glow. I am different. That's okay. I am special in my own way. Now, if Father Michael from Kenya was here, he would just get everybody in the congregation to say, Give a nice round of applause for my sister, Kimberly. She was so beautiful the way she sang. Oh, gosh, I can't believe I just sang that. Well, no one's listening except me and you and a couple of thousand, ten thousand or so people. Oh, but that's, wow. you know, okay, awesome. Who knows? There might be a producer out there who can find something to do with that beautiful voice. Hey, with auto-tunes, I could be a superstar. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, but that's too, you know, that, that you, it, you, I don't think you meant to bring it up, but that's, that really is true. We, we're living in a time right now where, you know, um, you know, a, a kid sitting down and saying, Oh, I have such a terrible voice and listen to so and so on the radio. And it's, if we can help our kids understand, well, there's a little bit of technological Exactly. And even all of these models, uh-huh. they just don't know about all the touch-ups and retouches they do to the photos. It's so much more. And, you know, that, that really, in a sense, it, it makes the students think that they can aspire to be something. But that's the whole premise of this book is just to realize that you are who you are, love it and embrace it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, as a teacher, what age do you see kids starting to kind of compare themselves? You know, we, we kind of all kind of understand, oh, teenagers are always looking oh, and wow. worrying about what they look like and everything, but does it mm-hmm. start younger than that? Definitely. I'm an elementary school teacher and um, I've also taught at the high school level. You would really be surprised. I see some of that starting as early as kindergarten. Oh, my goodness. Yes, especially with the little girls. It seems to be a little bit more prevalent with the girls. Mm -hmm. Um, But unfortunately, it does start very early. Oh, my goodness. Well, Mm -hmm. then we as parents need to sit down and start spending more time with our kids, reading great Mm -hmm. books like Mother, Mother, Where's My (laughs) Colors, and, and start these conversations because right. if, 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 we, if we don't have them, then the kids are going to be talking about it at school. Right, and, exactly. And I, you know, I was just, I just uh, went skating with my niece Jimena the other day, and we were talking about kids, and she's in high school, and mm-hmm. and you know, she was asking me some questions, and one of the things I said to her, I goes, "Listen, you know, if there's any other any questions you want me to ask, that you need to ask, ask me, ask your mom." Ask your o- older sister. I said, but don't rely on the information that you're getting from your high school kids because they don't know no. anything. <laughs> that was good advice. <laughs> and well, and and it starts, you know, in kindergarten, like you said, in kindergarten, mm-hmm. kids start talking to each other, and all of a sudden, oh, well, so and so said this, and she said it right. very authoritatively, so I have to listen to her. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so that's why this book is perfect for you know the. What the main premise is, of course, is to teach colors, and I integrated those lessons. So this book would be perfect for students in grades pre-K through second grade. Mm -hmm. So they can learn their colors while learning about the landscapes of Jamaica, while also learning about um, Mm -hmm. Mm self-love. I I think this is... This is one of those books that you can read over and over and over again and get a different 
a, a different outlook. You know, you, right. you talk about Jamaica in one reading and then talk about colors the next reading, mm-hmm. talk about hummingbirds. Yes, and it reading. also has a glossary um, at the end of the book with some awesome vocabulary words that are found throughout the book that um, – would definitely be a wonderful teaching opportunity. The book is written in rhyme, so there's opportunity there for phonetic skills. So this book can really be used for so many purposes. I've had teachers tell me um, that it is a perfect teaching tool. They've used it for so many things, and it can be used in the school. And, of course, just an awesome bedtime story to yeah. read at home. Yeah. And it can be used to sing with. We can just sing that song together. Go oh, yes. before before dinner and when it's time to go to bed. It would be yes. awesome, awesome. Well, we're, we're really excited. Uh, the Ace and Grace in the Flying Suitcase series. It's a it's a beautiful series. And this, I, I love. I love the the idea of the companion book. Yes, you know, so, so you 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 have the series, and you have Ace and Grace traveling to these new worlds, but then you have a companion, so you can dig a little bit deeper into the culture and into exactly. another lesson. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. So the next book, Ace Grace and the Flying Suitcase Visit Kenya, will be available in the spring. So I'm putting the finishing touches on it now. Well, then we have to get our invitation ready to invite you back to talk about that next book. I would love to. Before we go, remind everybody where they can go online to connect with you and find out more about uh, Mother, Mother, Where's My Color and the Ace and Grace in the Flying Suitcase series. They can find out all of the, that information as well as links to purchase the books at my website, which is www.agtravelbooks.com. Agtravelbooks.com, no doubt referring to Ace and Grace. Yes, awesome, exactly. Awesome. <laughs> Well, we think, we think that the Ace and Grace in the Flying Suitcase series and the new companion book, Mother, Mother, Where's My Color, would be fantastic additions to your family library. We've had the pleasure of speaking to the author tonight, Kimberly Hemmings. Kimberly, thanks for being back on the show. We look forward to your next visit. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We will be celebrating National Autism Day. Actually, it's International Autism Awareness Day, April 2nd. And our guest will be Sherry Howard. Sherry's been on the program before talking about her picture book, Rock and Roll Woods. We've invited Sherry back to talk uh, about what autism is, about how we can talk to our kids about it, how we can make kids aware that folks with a diagnosis of autism our people and can be wonderful friends and wonderful members of our community. Hey, if you're the author of a great children's book, we would love to have you on the show. Being a guest, it's fun, it's easy, and it gives you the opportunity to tell thousands and thousands of people all around the world about your great picture book. It really is easy. All you need to do is go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, click on the contact button, let us know about your great book. We'll let you know the next easy steps. We want to thank Kimberly Hemmings for joining us today. Please be sure to check out her book, Mother, Mother, Where Is My Color? We also want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to to join us today. Thank you so much for taking the time to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcast. And thanks so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of... The Reading With Your Kids podcast.